All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Good to have you here. Dagi, Eric, Ahmad. Uh, welcome. My name is Paul Tranny, and this is getting started in Adobe Fonts, but it's so much more than that, just so you know. Uh, I'm going to cover sort of how to, how to choose fonts, how to pick fonts, and that's the easiest way to tell like honestly, like a professional designer from somebody who's just kind of like starting out is by, I will judge you on how you pick your fonts, like in what fonts you use, okay? So it's super interesting. Uh, I'm gonna give you lots of tips in, ter in terms of like type and uh, the subject we decided to choose is just like to make some travel posters. Uh, big thank you to, awesome. Big thank you to uh, Howard as well for kicking off the Daily Creative Challenge, day five, get involved there. Uh, and you can check out that replay in the replays tab. But it's really fun because we have a fun week going on. It's all about editorial illustration. So uh, if you are joining me on YouTube, hop over to uh, behance.net forward slash live and uh, I can interact with you there. Lee, good to have you here. Uh, yeah, Jan Eric. Of course, lobster font. Hey, don't hate lobster. It's all good. Is lobster uh, the new Comic Sans is the question. But in general, this is our schedule this week. We have uh, we have Barbara up. Uh, she's actually with Chris. Uh, yeah. Uh, with Christine as well. So Barbara, then Kendall Henderson, uh, Stephen Zhu, uh, Ozinen. I can't say their last name, but we have a packed schedule this week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Join us at 9 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow. And it's all about editorial design this week, which is why we're dealing with fonts, probably the biggest thing. And you know what? A couple of our uh, streamers, our guests this week, um, have actually made some font packs, which is brand new as well. So I need to show you that. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right, jokes, jokes abound in chat. Good to have you here. And this is a sort of a learning stream. So apologies. Um, I don't mean for you to feel like ignored in chat, but I'm going to focus on uh, dealing with type and Adobe fonts. So uh, switching over, as you can see, uh, a warm welcome to you, Trevor and Ray's. Uh, let me know, just say hello in chat. I'd really appreciate it. Again, my name is Paul Tranny uh, here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. Uh, and yeah, so let's get this party started. And you see right away, uh, what am I going to? I'm not going to Typekit because what was once Typekit, by the way, as I type that in, is actually Adobe fonts. Okay, it says fonts.adobe.com. So forget this other branding. It's just part of your Creative Cloud uh, subscription. And you can see, uh, welcome to Adobe fonts. Find your favorites, use them anywhere, and unlimited font use. This is really exciting as well. So, um, uh, oh, I'll, no, I'm not, I'm not sick. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's dive into this because basically we have 13,000 fonts available to you that you can sync all 13,000 if you dare. Chances are if you're like any designer, you're probably going to sync a lot and still use the same five you always use because <laughs> that's what I tend to do. So let's get out of that rut and out of that box. Uh, um, good to have you here, uh, Oliver and Steven and Tim. Yay. Yay to everybody. So this is really cool because before you could only sync 100 fonts and now you can sync 13,000, okay? So that's what's new and it's called Adobe Fonts. It's no longer Typekit. Uh, we can kind of get started right in here um, as I click get started. I'm going to show you some new things in tools that you uh, may be using like uh, Illustrator and Photoshop. I'll probably be using Illustrator since uh, the latest advancement with the integration of Adobe Fonts is exemplified in um, good old... Um, uh, in Illustrator. So uh, a couple things. I'm going to be making a travel poster, a couple different uh, ideas in general uh, for that. Uh, I might sync a couple different fonts. I'm going to work on two subject matters. Uh, travel poster for Belize. Uh, if that works for you, might do some of that in Photoshop. And then I also uh, did this uh, last week just to show you a completed poster. Here's just a travel poster for Day of the Dead, uh, Milpa Alta, Mexico. So finding the right font for a case like this, you know, Helvetica is not going to do it, right? So that's the idea. It's like, let's use some cool fonts. Let's make something cool like this, right, for, say, Belize, for instance. Let's go beyond this font. So going out here, we can kind of sort through these fonts. 
um, if I'm dealing with, say, I want, I'm actually really big into slab serifs right now. Um, but let's just kind of, gosh, what, what should we go with? We want to do a couple things here. Okay, so let's start with this. This is Belize. It is a curious place. All right, so just so you can sort of, we can vision cast, we can actually go with what we have here uh, right away. Okay, and I started this in uh, Photoshop and also Illustrator, and I'm going to show you the differences. So here I'm in Photoshop. I might want to create a more fun font because they're known as a travel destination, right? So let's pick some fun, maybe a handwritten casual font is what we'll go with, and then we'll we can kind of sort through the different weights. Uh, look what's happening here. The sample text, by the way, I can enter my own text, which is what I want to do. B L I Z E, right? So this is more along the lines of what I'm looking for. Um, and again, I can, this looks, reads more like an R, so I don't want to use that one. Uh, I might need your help here as well. So, oh, uh, what's Slab Serif? Good question. Let me actually switch over to Slab Serif since you asked. Slab Serif makes these, these serifs, these end little notches, these things are slabs, so they're, they don't vary in weight at all, right? So it's just one big notch. And I love I like love slab serif. In fact, I'm I've already activated some of these. I love this one. Look at this one, sauna. I love it. Let's just grab some more of these. This adorn. Let's activate it. Turn it on. Right. Uh, licensing simplified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does all this magical stuff. Right. Activate fonts. So adorn and Rockwell and having fun because we could go nuts. We can download everything we want. Going back into this handwritten font. Let's get this uh, Belize one here. Look at this crazy one. Uh, I actually like this one below it. Okay, picking that as well. My favorite font uh, has always been Lust Script Pro uh, because I just think it looks awesome. Lust. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so that's the short of it. Um, this looks similar to the font that uh, the app, during the Apple event. Uh, it was very distracting. The font was actually like a handwritten font and just looked really amateurish. So know your, know your audience, right? Since this is a travel poster, I feel comfortable picking one of those fonts, right? So that's what I can do. Come in here. Is that Adorn going to be available? Let's check right up here at the top. I'll just kind of come in here and say Adorn. Is it there? Wait for it. Or there it is. There's the slab serif. And again, kind of chunky, but we want something casual there. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so basically all I'm saying is, uh, yeah, Jason does need to watch this, um, uh, is, uh, uh, what am I saying? Gone are the days where you actually had to do a couple things, but gone are the days where you have to download a zip file, unzip it, uh, double click, install the font, and all that stuff. Like literally it's synced directly. Okay. And what I'm talking about right now, again, I could like this font. I can uh, check that right there, or favorite it. So I always know that I'm using this fun uh, font for Belize, a curious place, right? Let's do you one better, by the way, as I kind of dive into this. What if I want, this is just a little like pro tip. Now, uh, oh, good to have you here. Anel, good to have you here. Cheers. My coffee's empty. All right, so pro tip for you out there. What if I want this beak to be over the E, all right, since we're creating a travel poster? Um, in fact, I don't even need to do that. I can go up to, I could do a couple things. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to just like select, I don't know. Usually I go over here to this like quick select tool and try to select it that way or magic wand, but we have this new thing called select subject up at the top. Okay. So Ty, uh, yeah, it was the worst. Thank you. So Ty, check this out. Select subject. I haven't even done this before. This is like, this is why this is live. We're designing live and I'm going to, uh, you know, use your help on helping me pick fonts too, but select subject. No hands mode, right? Not touching anything. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Photoshop. You just selected the subject, which in this case is, of course, this toucan. And by the way, I did, like I just I finally took a vacation and I went to Belize and I saw a toucan. This is not my picture of the toucan because mine was like <laughs> he was way up in the tree. But this is gorgeous. And look, what does it do? It selects this entire subject. Okay, so what do I want to do from here? 
since it is selected, I can go into Select and Mask now, selecting right in there, right? And you can see I can start to clean this up and maybe kind of feather out this edge a little bit uh, as I make this poster. And the cool thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to Output Settings. I don't want to output a selection. I want to output a new layer with a layer mask. So we're going to create a layer sandwich. Uh, Rays, just so you know, I'm in Photoshop CC uh, 2019 latest version. But new layer with layer mask, because I want to create a layer sandwich, as I'm calling it. Click OK. Boop. Here's my layer sandwich, right? Can turn on that background layer, right? You get the idea, background, foreground. Taking this, dragging it up once, boop. And then we have it. Now you can see that's overlapping. Um, I don't know what Johnny Cakes are, but oh, oh yeah, Johnny Cakes. I do know the Johnny Cakes are. Wow, Dagny, where are you from? I'm curious. Uh, I think I did have Johnny Cakes when I was down there. I don't remember. Because uh, I had lots of things. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <sighs> all right, so I accidentally, like, undid all of that. But just to recap, select subject. We'll select whatever subject uh, is happening in that case. And then you go right up here to select and mask. Do your cleanup. And then, yeah, Johnny Cakes. That's so funny. Tell me what those are, by the way. I would love to hear. Okay, so this is the difference between a professional as well. I'm glad you brought this up, Jan Eric. Picking the right font and doing a little detail like this, just having that beak over the top, just like that, and now we have a start to this uh, poster. I would definitely pick a different font here. I get it, okay? I could do that all day, all day long right in here, um, you know, selecting different fonts, or I could actually go right over here, and use my properties panel, okay? So the properties panel is really helpful as well. Kind of allows me to just kind of set this side by side and I can sort through. But I'm going to go beyond this, okay? So it's easy to pick fonts. Look at this, by the way. We need to change this, to be honest with you. This, like, te technically it's Typekit under the hood. Uh, I think it, eventually this needs to be Adobe Fonts because that's essentially what it is now, okay? I want to go with a serif font. Right? I'm going to keep it simple. Since this font is really decorative, I'm going to keep the one below it simple, but I'm going to be very mindful of the, um, the, like, the weight of it and uh, the, sort of the, the thickness of the letters and how wide or, or scrunched up they are. Okay? Um, in this case, I can actually go to Acumen, I can sort through all these serif fonts, but I can go to Acumen. I want to go to Acumen right now, and let's go all classes. I want a sans serif, and it's called Acumen. It's a concept, a variable concept font. So you ready for this? Like I said, I want to make this larger for one, and just delete my text for uh, as well. But uh, I want to adjust this text and this text is currently just a an acumen it's a variable uh, a variable font so right down here this is where I can control the width and everything so check this out uh, Carol uh, I'm taking the the weight and I can take that weight down because I want this or excuse me, take this weight down. I, I want this weight to kind of match. I'm trying to match this text closer so they don't, so they, they have to be similar but different, okay? So think maybe same, same family, maybe it's a, a cousin or something. So that's kind of, that's, that's how I view this sort of thing. You know, they have to look related is what I'm saying, okay? I can play with the weight, right? And it's cycling through all these different fonts right in here. If I open this up, it's going through all these different fonts right up here, okay? But here I can just control it easily. And again, I'm just keeping this simple. Another thing I would do in here, by the way, is increase the um, tracking 
for this text some, just to give it more of a space, like spacing it out a little bit. All right, you get the idea. Cool, cool, resize. Do all this jazz, I'd probably slap a, I'm into doing this lately uh, as a designer, just kind of slapping a sort of a bar behind that text, doing something kind of like this is what I would do. It's smaller text, but it still kind of stands out. Okay, so we paired those fonts. We have an Acumen Pro, and then we have this other font that I don't even know the name of it. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I think Jan Eric just uh, s mentioned something. There's something called, he's talking about forcing bold and, and all caps and different things like that. There's something called like a pseudo bold. So if there isn't a bold to a font, sometimes some apps will just make the letter thicker, which has to be annoying as a, a typographer to have them just like add a stroke around the text or whatever the case may be. What's happening here as I adjust this text is it's actually gonna go through um, the these actual fonts. So it's not a pseudo bold when I drag the weight to the uh, left or right. It's actually cycling through different fonts, right? Cool, cool. Okay, so that's not bad. It needs more work, I get it, but we just started. And I want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, let's not forget we have an exciting schedule this week. It's all about editorial design. We're talking Adobe fonts. We're ta talking font packs, which I'm going to dive into now as well. And it's going to be really fun. Okay. Cool. Faux bold. Fox bold, Carol. So this is the schedule for this week. Uh, hang out at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time starting tomorrow. Okay, so that's one font. I'm going to go beyond this. There's this Day of the Dead. I want to go into one more thing in the browser, and then we'll jump into Illustrator. I'm going to go back here, right up here at the top. Whoop. Wait for it to load. Font Packs. Okay, so I'm kind of shifting gears. I think this is, this is done, right? But what if I want to find some different fonts for what's happening right in here? Like, and please forgive me, I wanted to show you like a final poster, but this is obviously what this, this did not look like this before. So let's just disable that layer mask so we could see this text right here. So, here's this text right here. What if I wanted cooler text right here? Um, and really for this whole campaign promoting Day of the Dead in Milpa Alta, Mexico, right? So we would go out here and I want to dive into font packs now. So rather than me having to hunt down individual fonts, I can say, hey, just give me that whole collection. Just like, uh, I don't know, do you guys use a Discover Weekly on, <laughs> like just give me the, like on Spotify, just give me the music that I like. So I do Discover Weekly, like, yeah, just give me all that music that I like. Or like, let me, let me pick Monday Morning Blues since it's Monday morning or whatever, all right? So that's what, consider these are like playlists for fonts. Playlists for fonts. And as I take a look, you can see right down here, I actually already activated it, but there's this monster pack. I'm like, oh, you know, Day of the Dead monster. This, these are all the greatest hits for, uh, for fonts that I might consider using rather than me having to hunt down um, each font, just give me all of them. So it gives me all of these. Half the time, I don't remember what these fonts are even called. I really like this one. Wow. Charunum. Can you agree? Uh, oh, thank you, Alex. You're too kind. But Alex, can you agree? Like half the time, the problem with fonts is just remembering the font names. <laughs> I'm going to go in here to Photoshop and uh, dive into this and uh, check out what we have in here. Let's see if this is even in here. Oh, I'm so excited. <sighs> okay, so that's that's what I've done. I've downloaded the greatest hits. I can go to TAU. That's what I type in here. TAU. Just to prove that it's in there. And now we have that Terranum bold font. Looks really cool. And just is very decorative, which is very, uh, you know, embl emblematic of uh, Day of the Dead. Just like that. Turn that on. And there we have sort of the start of something, okay? So, 
font packs, I can start to download all those. That looks pretty cool. That's done, this poster's done. Pack it, ship it. You can check that out on uh, uh, good old, uh, on my Instagram account. You can see that final poster. Okay, but let's shift gears and let's go into Illustrator. Yeah, I know it does, Carol. It's gonna, it's all, it's all good, Carol. I get it. Still says type kit. It will say type kit because really, yeah, it's okay. It's a step in the right direction what we're doing. So now I'm in Illustrator. I'm gonna show you the difference. Oh yeah, oh Jan Eric, I love textures too. I, I, I end up, you know, sort of uh, having everything in um, right in here inside of. Uh, my libraries panel, uh, all my assets. So I have nature and all that fun stuff. But let's go beyond this. Um, and now I'm in Illustrator. I'm gonna show you the difference. This is brand new, so I'm super excited to show you this, Ahmad. Uh, sweet. I always encourage you, you think you can, the, the number one lesson I learned when I got my first first job at a, actually at a television network doing, Doing motion graphics was my first job, doing motion graphics for a television network. And the one thing that I learned is like, if you're using textures or anything, you can simulate things on the computer all day long, but if you're not taking realistic like photos and using those as textures, take photos, like use that real gritty real world texture and it will bring your designs to the next level. Okay, so moving on. Here I am in Illustrator, selecting this font for Belize, okay? And check this out, like, I can go right in here to, let's actually just show you just this, into all of these fun fonts. Look, here's not only um, all my fonts that I can kind of click through. Oh, look at this, gorgeous. I can go through my favorites, but this is something that uh, we also have, we have recently added. Clicking on recently added, and I can see the fonts that were recently added and find that one Oh, actually, Bello was a recent one that I can then select, okay? Uh, filter recently added fonts, right? So I like doing that, clicking right there, and we'll just start maybe just having a couple different versions, and maybe you can tell me which one you like. Because like I said, the big problem is not really picking the font, but remembering the font name. Here makes it so I don't have to. That Z is kind of hard to read. That's one. That one's too rough. This one's almost too bold and too in your face. We need to keep with something kind of fun, but I'm just sorting through all my uh, recent fonts. Eh. And uh, yeah, this is where you'll spend a lot of time is just kind of going through. I say graphic design <clears throat> isn't a matter of just picking a font. That's not your job. Uh, it's so much more than that. You can't, a logo isn't picking a font, right? But here's a couple for you. Let's go beyond that because check this out. Oh, something classic. Garth, I agree with you totally. That <clears throat> Garth, that tells me that you're probably like a professional like working in the field because you typically do want to go with something like classic and then maybe you modify it yourself, okay? Uh, that's what I end up doing. That's why I use Helvetica New a lot and then I just modify that font. But let's go beyond that because what's happening here is I can't find a font that I really like. So check this out. I can, I can actually do a couple things. Let's move this over. Go in here and... Notice, this is what I'm doing, is I can actually see right in here, and let me just open up my character panel. So I actually see my font, my selected text is right in here. So I don't even need to roll over each one to really get an idea of what font's going to work, right? But I can turn that off. I can search and filter all the fonts right in here within Illustrator, mind you, Alex, Anel, Paul. I'm inside of Illustrator now. I'm not in the browser. Remember how I was like, oh, you got to go out here and you got to go click through, you know, and, uh, you know, find the font you want right through uh, good old Adobe fonts, 
right? I don't need to even go to the browser if you're in Illustrator. And that's the big thing I wanted to drive home. Rather than using this off to the side, guess what? Moving this over, zoop, it's all right in here exactly as I'd expect it, right? So again, I want to go with more of a script font. These are all the script fonts on my I really like that font. I think that's probably the one I'm going to go with. Going through all my script fonts on my desktop. There's my less script, my favorite font. Oh, please. Picking a font I want. Going beyond that, because Ahmad, I'm also realizing that, honestly, this isn't even that good of a font. Like, my script fonts, I'm not, like, big into script fonts, but... I need to find something better. And guess what? Like, I don't need to worry about uh, sorting through fonts on my desktop. I can go to find more. Check this out. What's happening here? Jan, Eric, and Ahmad, I'm so glad you, everybody's joining me. Find more. This is fantastic. This is actually going out to Adobe Fonts, right? So it's I don't have to worry about going to the browser, and I'm picking fonts that I haven't added yet. They're still, they still exist in the cloud, right? So I can come through here and maybe I still want to sort by script fonts out there, rolling down, finding a fun font that will work. Ooh, I really like this one's pretty cool. I might be able to do something really fun there. And guess what? I'll do two things right now, by the way. I always like add to favorites, boom, and then I can activate that font. And it says, hey, you want to activate those fonts? Of course I do. Elise. For Belize, that'll make it easy to remember. And then I'll go on down and pick other fonts too. There's a lot of a lot of bad ones. I think the Z is such a tough letter. That's what's gonna make this a little bit difficult, right? And I'm not even sure that this is like 100% the way to go. See, that Z is really tough. Either way, I'll just kind of show you that I can go ahead and activate fonts without going to the browser, without ever leaving Illustrator, and I can start to work immediately, right? Boom, boom, boom. I favorited one of them, clicking right in here. There it is, Elise, the one that I favorited. I can click it right there. Let's check out Elise. It does have some alternates. Alternates for it. Hmm, nothing too crazy. But what's happening here is it's showing the alternates for some of these letters, okay? So that's another criteria that I usually pick is like, how many alternate, uh, alternates are there for this particular font? Let me know. I want to know, uh, Anel or Carol, like what, what your favorite font is, or if you know a, a cool font that has lots of alternates. Again, I'll go to Lust just because that's what I want to do. Just to give you an idea, I can take this uh, take this L, for instance, and let's add this flourish on the top. Boop, just like that, okay? What about the Z? The Z has this cool longer leg, and that's what I think is fun about that font, okay? But showing you those glyphs, alternate glyphs available as well. Oh, uh, great question. Uh, Jan Eric is how do you get good at font kerning or what do you look for? Um, look for weird gaps. Like I think you really need to step back, like go get a drink of water, have some coffee, come back and then like look at your font with like fresh eyes. Cause I think you get too much in the details of fonts to realize that it's not, it's maybe not working in some cases. Okay. All right. Moving on along. Moving along, moving along. Let's go through some of this other stuff. I want to pick. You also need to look for certain letters because I think um, any a, a, a tall, like a skinny letter, like an L, like a lowercase L next to um, like a, a Z or something. Um, I think an L and an A need to be closer together because that A looks smaller even though it has a wider base. So keep an eye out for that. I 
I want to bring up another example. Let me show you this. Ready for this? You ready for this? This is going to save you so much time if you're working in Illustrator. So here's this font that I have. I'm thinking about using it, okay? Again, maybe from Adobe Fonts. I'll be like, okay, this is cool. I would like to, um, you know, maybe first select it. But, you know, pick a, pick a color and you're like, okay, I want to add like a a black outline, and you get this issue. Who's had this issue, Carol? Uh... <laughs> that's also good. Ryan Ford, that's a, great, that's a great suggestion. If you put it down, like flip it, reverse it, show it like upside down. I know a lot of illustrators will do that. If you like take your artwork and you, fl you like reverse it, you're, it, you're not going to read it uh, as like letters anymore. It's more shapes and you can see those weird gaps. And I think that's a great, I was actually thinking that as well, uh, but a great idea. So this is a, a font that I'm thinking about going with. Okay, and we have this issue. This is an illustrator. Oh no, no, this should be connected. How do we do that? What do you do, Jan Eric? What do you do? You break this. I know what you do. You break it up. You're like, oh, I gotta break this up, right? You know, create outlines, right? And then you have to like join it together, and then that gets rid of the gaps. But this is no longer needs this no longer is a font it's like uh jan eric is saying the b and the e need, he's exactly right it needs kerning it's like no longer even a font now it's like text or excuse me it's no longer a font it is a it, it, there are shapes now so I'm, now i'm kind of like i probably spelled this wrong too but check this out i can go in here i can select this and i can use put that away uh opening up my appearance panel so appearance panel, this is how you can get rid of that gap and still or get make it one unified text is go in here and you want to add a new fill. OK, this new fill will then be green, for instance. OK, and now I have that capability to, um, you know, here's a stroke. Pull that down like that. So that's what you need to do is just use the appearance panel and then you can add color on top of it, on top of the entire shape, and it's still editable. So I can come in here and it's like Jan Eric was saying, let's adjust the letting or the kerning here, um, right in here uh, as appropriate, and it's still actually text, right? That's what we're doing. I'm going to view this. I'm going to hide our boards. That's another tip I'll do is just like really have some fun right in here. Another thing I can do right in here, like guess what? What if I wanted to add a gradient? I would still have to break it up. That's what you're thinking. Oh, I got to break this up and then I can add a gradient to it, right? Because there's no way if I select this text, I can't add a gradient to it. Sure, I can change the color, but if I wanted to add just a nice gradient here, it can't do it. You actually, you're thinking that you have to create an outline you know, and ruin your text and it's no longer editable. Or you can come in here and say, hey, you know what? For this fill, let's give it that nice gradient like that. And it's still text is the idea. All right. I think you get the point there. Um, and I'm not even saying this is this is that great. I still might want to play with it some more because that's still too, too strong of a, of a gradient. But the fact of the matter is I can... I can tweak it. All right. So many great tips. That's exactly right. I want you really to know that. There's so many things that I want to show you that I'm, I get too excited. I got to calm down. All right. Right in here. By the way, if you're not using the new properties panel, you should, because rather than having all these other panels, I can just go in and use my properties panel. It serves up exactly uh, the panels that I need at that point in time. So I can click edit gradient. Right, it'll open up the gradient panel and I can adjust. Let's actually adjust this color kind of like that, right? And let's just kind of have it go like that. Something like that, you get the idea, okay? So might be an option. <sighs> yeah. Thank you, Crystal use that tips all the time. That's great to hear. Yeah, and you know it saves your life. Okay, so again, appearance panel, you could stack as much of these, uh, you know, fills and strokes on top of one another as well. So if I decide I want another, another outline around this text, I'll just add a new stroke, 
right? With this new stroke, it's going to be larger. It's going to be below the current ones, maybe at the very bottom. And I'm going to change this color just to a nice, just to show you. And we'll just like change it to a gold or something. But you can kind of see what's happening there, right? So now I have multiple strokes and I can even have multiple fills. And, uh, and Paulo's writing it down. Good, my friend. Let's do something like that. Cool. Cool. You get the idea. So we're just having fun. We are making a poster and it is it. That's good. 35 minutes in. I'm going to need your help. This is this is kind of fun. This almost looks like a very beachy. Right? Which is not bad. I'm going to go into preferences and change this scale strokes and effects when I scale it up. There we are. Let's move on and uh, get back to what we were doing. Um, let's take that. Boop. No. Um, I think I will keep this. I might keep this text and work on this. Oh, Aaron Fields. Ah, oh, I'm so glad I can help you, Aaron, because like it's huge. Like I've seen so many people's files, their Illustrator file, they have the same image one on top of the next. Like multiple, you know, they stack it up because they want to add different gradients. You don't need to do that. You just use your appearance panel. All right. So that's good. That's like that. Uh, let's let's work on this fun poster, shall we? What else should we do to it? Am I, uh, hmm. I don't know. I can continue to work on this text here. Uh, I think that again, if the if you if there's one big takeaway is the fact that you have access to uh, thirteen thousand fonts and you never have to leave Illustrator. You have access to thirteen thousand fonts, right? And you never have to leave Illustrator because right in here, find more maybe show me some fun decorative fonts, right? And you could see how horrible my choices are being right now, especially since I'm just sorting through the decorative ones, okay? Again, I said I'm a big fan of Slab Serif, and we can see what we have in here, this Adele. Oh, Adele. Go with that. Again, kind of picking a font that might work. Another tip that I would uh, share with you is you might want a font that uh, has like multiple weights. I want a font that's really flexible. Okay, so for this font, I can say, hey, you know what? Give me uh, one with different weights. So I just click. Actually, sh um, I can click in here and, sh you know, sort of show me a Brill. Okay, does a Brill have a light? Yeah, it has a light version and there's a medium, and then there's a heavy. So that's how I can kind of determine if a font has lots of different versions. Sure enough, a Brill does. I could sync that font. It's being synced. I could also find similar, <clears throat> excuse me, fonts to it, uh, but you get the idea. I really like this. A Brill looks really good. And then I can apply it A, B, R. There we are. Oh, Belize. All right, let's move on. Uh, oh, Jan Eric, you're too kind. I'm glad you're sticking around. Uh, yeah, Ryan, can you swap fonts on the treatment you just did with all the extra fills and gradients? Oh, yes, you can. Do I know how? I think I have to change that in preferences. Because the thing is, if you use your eyedropper, okay, right over here, and I have this text selected. If I pick up all that, if I wanted to pick up all the all these properties, I can click right on it, and it will pick up uh, these general properties. It actually doesn't pick up the appearance. So that's kind of your next step. So, huh? <sighs> Interesting. Uh, I don't think so. So uh, I would like to do that very same thing, by the way. So good call. Um, you're able to pick up the basics, but it doesn't get what's in the appearance panel. All right, let's move on. What else shall we do? I, f I feel like I want to add some fun, some funness. Uh, 
Uh, and I really want to actually ultimately kind of bring this into Photoshop. So bear with me as I just design, adjusting the uh, kerning or spacing, taking this font down. Maybe that's too much. Bring that in like that. Kind of doing what I was doing earlier. Let's have this weight. That's kind of why I like this bar lately, is it just makes a nice weight for uh, your, you know, for your, your graphic here. So let's just do that. Shrink this up. And if you are just joining me, my name is Paul Tranny, and I'm making a travel poster for Belize. In fact, let's uh, take this content, copying it, pasting it in as a smart object. And now we can use this as a potential option as well. these and I'm as I drop this in I'm noticing that uh, I would actually rather have this word Belize to be in white so let's just double click on that it's a vector it's a, it's a smart object it's gonna jump back out uh, There we go. Selecting this text, changing it, saving it. Uh, let's actually play with the layer modes. This is also a new, a brand new feature. Is there's the blend modes for this text? Because I'm thinking this Belize right here is like really too big and fat, and I think it'd be really cool if I apply a blend mode to it. So with that layer selected. I can click right here, and I'm not doing anything tricky. I'm just rolling over these different ones, and it will start showing me different options. Like, what does this look like with overlay, for instance? Right, hard light, you get the idea. Since this is white, it's kind of harder to tell, but you can see what's happening right in here. I like overlay, selecting overlay, shrink down, putting this right down here, maybe making this larger. All right, you get the idea. Let's move on. I need to I need to do different versions definitely cuz this one is not I mean it's okay. I want to grab maybe this one. These Mayan ruins, why not? Uh, so many Mayan ruins in Belize, by the way. It's uh, the least populated country out of all the Americas and it is um, only has about what 350,000-ish uh, people who live there. <clears throat> Do something different here. Let's do this. Let's do let's 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 be punny. Let's do a fun like pun. So on not really a pun. Unbelievable, right? This is for Belize. This is a phrase you'll see a lot down there, so don't think it's original at all. Let's drop in another image right down here. Like that. In fact, that looks pretty good. Let's license that image directly. Let's see if this works. I think, uh, yeah, lorem ipsum, new lorem ipsum feature. So what you mean by that is like, basically you can, um, <clears throat> oh, I knew that was going to happen. Let's go out to, let's find, I could find similar images than this one. Uh, but basically when you click the type tool, uh, it will give you just the text lorem ipsum initially, right? By the way, you can change that. There are lots of ipsums. If you wanna, if you wanna be like, if you want to kind of have some fun, oh, I got to see if this will work with this. I just updated Illustrator. There was a sort of a hot fix 
today. Uh, you notice how in Illustrator you have this default text, lorem ipsum, as you drag out a box? Well, you can actually hack that. So I'm going to do that right now, just real fast, since we are talking about fonts and text. I think this is uh, somewhat related. Let's go into... Illustrator. Oh, man. So I do not have... But basically, if you put a... Uh, I think it says it's a placeholder.txt file right in here it will um, actually replace this text. So since you mentioned Bacon Ipsum or Hipster Ipsum, you can do a, it's called placeholder.txt, you put it right in this folder, and then it will always be that uh, Bacon Ipsum every time you click right in here, okay? So yes, so uh, let's just play, place, hold on. But you get the idea. I won't really worry about it, but you can see, um, you know, I've, that's just a, a quick bonus tip. Unbelievable, right in here, let's view some of these images. Let's jump out to see more results on the web. And just so you know, uh, I didn't really mention, uh, I kind of talked about font packs earlier, but since I switched subjects, right, I used a font pack to make my Day of the Dead poster, and I used this monster pack for it. So rather than going through all those different, trying to find fonts individually, I just synced the entire monster pack. I also synced this Wanderlust travel brochure as well. So just give me all those fonts that are related, right? And now we can see in here this Eldwin script might be something I'd go with. I really like it. Azo Sans, awesome. I might actually use Azo Sans, right? Since I'm making this travel poster. Azo Sans, black, bold, in your face, is exactly what I want in this case. And now I can jump out and maybe find some images. Yeah, Alex, put it in the main folder in your applications. That's all you need to do. Applications, Illustrator, you put it right here. Zoop. Placeholder.txt, and then it'll replace, replace that text. It's finding similar images based on this one right here. Uh, that looks pretty good. I actually really like this. That one's pretty good, actually. Ooh, this is gorgeous. Yeah, let's just go with this one. How about that? Syncing it to my travel uh, Creative Cloud Files folder right now, licensing it, and it will appear where I need it to. Oh, I'm glad you like that font. Thank you so much. Uh, boom, boom. There we are. Clearing this out, by the way. Clear that out. And this is the new image that I've licensed. I'm dropping that in. Making it the size I want, bringing it down here, something like that. And now let's have some fun with this text. Probably I'd take, hmm, probably change the color of this font, use this new feature that I talked about, just being able to select and roll over. Like this is something like I might want, something kind of like that for this travel poster, just changing that to overlay. Or command shift O will actually bring it up. Or shift, yeah, yeah, command shift O will bring it up. Since we're making a travel poster, I'm going to switch this over. This is wait for it. Taking this down. All right. Maybe I will do that. Maybe I'll use this vector smart object that I brought in my Illustrator file. But this is our life as designers. It's just figuring out, playing around, seeing what looks good, you know, dropping that in the corner because they need to know what is unbelievable. I think you get the idea, and yeah. 
Uh, Dagny, how do you get unused fonts? Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Jan Eric. Looks like you are taking care of it. Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's play with this some more. I think this does need to be maybe even like maybe I change this back to the white. I think as you as you grow as a designer, you you realize that all the fun little tricks that you might think are neat, like. You know, you could do so much, but I think there's a lot of power in uh, simplicity, right? So this isn't even like that crazy of uh, a poster right now. Uh, I'm gonna do show you one more uh, Photoshop feature. I'm actually gonna change the canvas size because I want this to be a travel poster, so I need to make it larger. Let's make the height 22. 18 by 22, why not? Shrinking that down and I have this new feature because I want to put an image right in here. Um, in fact, I might want to put three. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to say, hey, going into uh, ch -ch 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 new, new guide layout, right? What do I want to do? I want to, I want to have three images right down here. So I'm going to change this to three columns with no rows or borders. So I've just added all those guides. Done. Right now, I'm going to select this new tool, Dagny. Do you know about this? Shows me right there. It's all fancy. Right, right here. We can see it. It's the frame tool, and I'm just going to drop in three frames. One, two, three. Because I don't know what images I want to put there just yet. But let's say I want this toucan. Well, let's just drop it right there on that frame. And now I can move it into position like that. Okay, so that's what I've done there. Uh, taking some more images as I go out to Adobe Stock, I'll just type in Belize. I can grab some more images really fast. All right, cool. Search. There we go. There's this huge sinkhole, which is another thing in Belize that's kind of interesting. I'm going to save that preview to travel. Uh, it has the largest uh, barrier reef in the, uh, in the northern hemisphere. So it's the second largest barrier reef outside of the Great Barrier Reef that's like near Australia. Uh, random tip. But I'm sinking some images. They're being synced. I can grab that image. Dr oh. Drop it right in there. Scale it up in this case. Let's get that sinkhole. Let's get it like that. Let's grab that, dropping that right there. Ooh, K Calker. Awesome. But there I have those images exactly as expected. I might license these, licensing them as well. Uh, what are the, uh, okay, I have about, uh, what, two minutes left, and I want to be respectful of your time. Again, I've been working on making a travel poster. I've been using Adobe Fonts as expected, right? So right out here been using uh, Adobe fonts, browsing fonts. I've been using font packs to give me that complete playlist of amazing fonts for travel based on travel. Guess what? Our guests this week have made their own travel packs as well. You can see them right here. Barbara made uh, a, a um, font pack and so did Kendall. So um, maybe more have, but I know that I saw their names as uh, contributors to font packs, which is really cool. And you'll see that on that page if you go there right now to uh, fonts.adobe.com under collections or font packs, right? So I'm using those. I've synced them. I've used Illustrator uh, to potentially grab or find some fonts that'll work. Picked this one and synced it. And this became the little sort of word mark in the lower right over here ah, sort of like the mid uh, 
sort of left side like that. And now I'm just still working on this design. So as I work on this, uh, feel free to comment. I'm gonna post this to Instagram later today uh, because I need to kind of finish this up. But this was really uh, only one of the many posters that I was working on today, as you saw. But give me some more time to make this awesome and uh, look for it on Instagram if that works for you, right? So many tips, so many things to talk about, so many things to do as a designer. You should, I mean, hopefully you love, you love designing and uh, you can make it a career if it isn't already. So I thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with me as I tweak this to death. Look for it on Instagram, P-T-R-A-N-I. And uh, that's about it. Yes, the frame tool is new. I covered lots of new features in Photoshop. I covered new features in Illustrator, which was really fun. Didn't really talk about InDesign because I wanted to focus on fonts, but uh, with those font packs, there's actually files available. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, Barbara and some of them will talk about that as well. But like right in here, you can also download the Adobe font uh, stock template in here you can see that it is actually a InDesign brochure layout. So you could actually sync the template as well, which is really cool, okay? But since I wanted to show you the new features in Illustrator, that's why I ended up using Illustrator. All right, oh, Jan Eric, oh, puns. Unbelievable stream. Thank you so much. I'll work on this some more. Um, Anytime you start, this is the next thing, and I want to talk about this more, but like if you're using the frame tool, it means you're adding images like from different sources. You need to make sure you match the tone of all of these images, right? So they all came from like the same camera with the same settings, and that's something else I need to talk about, but you're going to see what uh, I come up with as I post it to Instagram later today. Uh, all right, so Lydia, I appreciate you, Jason, Jan, Eric, everybody joining me today. Uh, Dagny, Francie, you guys are all fantastic. And uh, I'm actually going to be going live on the Facebook uh, Creative Cloud page today as well. So just follow us on Facebook, like Creative Cloud, Illustrator, InDesign. There's a CC Design, uh, and that's where we live stream as well. And that's, that's where we find out your real names. So, okay. And uh, don't forget, we had a hot fix to uh, basically for Illustrator that just launched today. Thank you so much, Dagny. Everybody have a beautiful day. I really appreciate you. Uh, just be kind to one another. Give somebody a hug. Let them know that, you know, I don't know, whatever. Just, just give somebody a compliment that's honest. And uh, I just know I appreciate everyone here. And Van Dam as well, who's amazing. Van Dam is nine. Is that right? Love you. Appreciate you and your sister. Jan Eric, you're the best, Ryan Ford. So many fun, familiar names, and I'm so happy to see you uh, and hang out with us uh, all this week. Thanks so much. I'll leave you with the schedule. And uh, here it is. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. See ya.